That land is mine. Say that as much as you can. That land is mine. Get it all out of your system. There's a difference in Jamie after all this. He's always doing it not for his job, but for his heart. He was protecting them and the things they wanted. And those people have been terrible to him, and now he doesn't have to do that anymore. I'm not your son. I don't have to. Everyone makes their play for the ranch. Already the impact is felt. You know, Beth's run into <laughs> troubles with filings. I have power of attorney over the estate. If the estate were in Utah. Business is not law. In fact, they're very contradictory. The state of Montana does not recognize power of attorney issued by other states. Then you see it start to fall away. You start to, you start to see the sweat. That many moving parts, that many people in a room with, and that much power in the room, you know, and different perspectives. The governor, Rourke and Willa. A lot of different people coming in now, a lot of chess pieces. It doesn't stay calm for long. There were moments in that scene with him where you know it's going to get juicy. Thomas Rainwater is there as well. Yeah, this is the moment. Of course, Jamie is sitting with a lot of new information about his family. And of course, none of us know that. But it's very weighted for him in a way. And he's responding to everybody in the room in a kind of a different way. It was Willa and Angela and Beth and myself all in the room. And I loved it. And it just felt right and felt fun and strong. And I think that the women are watching, the viewers watching, are going to respond to that as well. So that was a tricky scene, the chess match. Willa sits across from Beth with the full knowledge that she has put her down. And then, of course, Rainwater is behind us. Could I see the environmental impact report? They're there to represent their interests, who I think we know about. We don't know that they're going to put a curveball in the room. All the gang will be there. When we go into this meeting thinking, you know, we have this sewn up, we've got everything in place, piece of cake, let's just get this done. And then the cards start to drop on the tables, and then it becomes a beautiful poker match. I need to step out for a moment. It started out a certain way, and it took a left, and it's going somewhere really fiery and interesting. You can just see it in the moments in those scenes. The state has to move ahead with them in a domain if you don't take the offer. Everything happens. The state says they're going to make their play. Uh, as attorney general, I try to make my play for keeping the ranch for John. And then Rainwater comes in and makes the final sort of push. That's your angle, too, John. How does this impact your land? Native Americans and the cowboys are coming together to fight the bigger giant. It's it's in the history books, isn't it? I mean, history just repeats itself. Beth is just, she's out there. She doesn't hold anything back. Well, I'm all fucking ears. Just seeing the contrast, culturally speaking, because everything's so big in the Dutton family. I mean, we're more grounded, we're anchored, but you're seeing some of the same dynamic just from different points of view. You have an opportunity to free that land of him. She's kind of playing two sides. So while she is partnering up beyond just helping the Dutton family keep their land, she wants the land back for her people because this is actually their ancestral territory. This is their land. She also has her own agenda. There's always something below the surface that's there. Kill him and give us our land back. You don't know what to expect because you've got so many personalities and individuals, so we have to up the stakes. We're hanging off a cliff there. Don't feel much like a land deal in Montana, does it? No, it feels like an oil deal in Yemen, and from now on, that's how we treat it. People are starting to take sides. Some people are just screaming for blood. Once they get enough of it on Yellowstone, they want more. To now have an audience who are with you in the trenches. We work really hard on this, and we all love it. It becomes an event every week. We hate Beth's office. A lot of things happen at Beth's office. Last season, we busted it up a little bit. This season, we'll really do it. So this is the uh, special effects department. This is our fabrication shop. Because of that location, there is no pyro. We did it all with air. He initiates the button. The valve opens up. The more you walk a scene like that through with the director, it'll change as it goes, and it'll get more precise. They understand action. You know, initially it's like, God, man, this is like kind of creepy and weird, but, but beautiful. Now, you have to understand this guy doesn't have any money. And whatever money he has, you know, he gives it to the, the grave digger. He wants to give her a ring, so he takes it. And, you know, his mom's obviously, you know, somebody that he loved and respected. And 
I think by giving Beth that ring, it brings potentially, in his mind, you know, them closer together. I mean, there's a ton of colors in it. I, I don't really ever question Taylor. Like, I, th I think he likes to, you know, to push me in certain areas and, and see how I react to certain stuff on camera, which I love. In the end, it's a beautiful moment. Who'd you kill? Don't ask me that, Beth. There's no secret to what Rip does. She knows what Rip does. She knows who he is. She, she knows why he does what he does for her father. It, it, there's no great secret. He has this great ability to be able to compartmentalize in reality and being able to draw a line in the sand and this is what needs to be done. And I think that's what makes him special to John. That train only runs in one direction. He's this guy who goes out and, and gets rid of problems, but at the same time, too, is also a son of his. Let me know if you need me. To see Teeter, Colby, all those characters so caught up in that violence and that anger and that sense of Western justice, to be so thoroughly bloodthirsty, I think is really complicated for Jimmy. I think it's one of the more interesting parts about me and Laramie coming in there is that I don't really think that they have an idea of like the severity of what happens in that family and, and on that ranch. Laramie's mind's eye trying to take in what is what exactly is going on here. She knows there's something going on, but I think all she can really do is just sort of guess at this point. Laramie's a little turned on by the whole thing. I think she's excited by it. She likes a little danger, so. <laughs> she starts to let her mind wander a little bit. She lets her imagination go. Do you know what a brand means? Jimmy is sort of questioning his decision to take the brands, and he, he's imagining this other life with Mia. And Mia is pushing him in that direction, or she's pushing him. I think it's really beautiful, actually. She's not pushing him to do what she wants. She's pushing him to do what he wants. I do think that she knows there's something really dire going on and that it's not as sort of like happy-go-lucky as she may have thought. She's saying, don't just keep living this life because Rip wants you to. Don't keep living this life because Lloyd wants you to or John Dutton wants you to or Casey wants you to. What do you want? He loves Mia, but he also loves Rodeo. And I don't think he loves violence. She just gives him the freedom to do what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is get back on that horse. And as soon as he gets back on that horse, he's back on the ground. I think it could go so many ways. I have no idea. I just am excited to find out. I've ever seen a cliffhanger in a show. It's about as good as it gets. You're about to find out that John has obviously been shot up. Jimmy, I told him to stay off the fucking horses. It doesn't listen ever. It's Beth no. has been blown up and is in a building. I was incredibly surprised by these last two episodes in season three, especially the last episode. I think everybody will be on the edge of the seats. And then we have obviously year four, and let's see what Taylor comes up with.